Welcome to In Focus, a closer look at human relations. I'm your host, Bill Bell. Uh, this program is sponsored by the Cincinnati Human Relations Commission. Uh, we are honored today to have uh, Council Member Kevin Flynn, who's, who's going to talk to us about, the, I guess, the Cincinnati Charter. And Mr. Flynn, if you thank you for coming. And, thank, um, thanks for having me, Bill. You know, we, um, I guess we should ask first about what, what is the charter or, or why to review? So, well, first of all, the city charter is kind of like the city's constitution. Okay. It's the basic governing document for the city. Um, in Ohio, you can either operate under default rules that are set forth by state law, or cities are allowed to set up their own rules. Okay. And so in the 1920s, because of a, a period of political upheaval and uh, the Boss Cox era, where a politician was pulling the strings on all of the, of state uh, of all of local government. All right. A group of reformers got together and said, "We're going to reform our charter and institute." And really, that's where the city manager form of government came from. Was was it arose out of this reform movement of the 1920s and and 19th, since the reform movement in Cincinnati. Yes. Okay. So Cincinnati was really one of the first big cities to ever adopt the council city manager form of government. Okay. And that was done through a charter reform effort. Okay. The charter's been amended a hundred times since right. then. Okay. But it had never really gone through a comprehensive reform. All right. Or a comprehensive review. And so, as I started getting interested in being on council, I thought it important that I familiarize myself the with the charter. basic governing document of the city. Okay. And I found a lot of provisions in there that were just obsolete. They didn't make any sense at all. Can you give me an example? Well, I'll give you a couple of examples. All right. Um, there was a provision in there concerning the governing of the University of Cincinnati. Now, back in 1970s and earlier, mm -hmm. the city used to own the University of Cincinnati. Okay. It wasn't a state university. It was a city-owned university. Right. Same with what's now called University, Center, U university of Cincinnati Medical Center, University Hospital. Yeah. Used to be general hospital owned by the city that hasn't been the case since the 1970s okay. yet we had an entire article in you know, pages about the governance of the university of cincinnati and general hospital okay. in our charter so if someone coming into the city were just to read our charter you would assume the university of cincinnati was owned by the city and that the city appointed all of the trustees and that the city ran the University of Cincinnati. Obviously, that's been important this summer. It's uh, yeah. pretty clear. <laughs> I mean, yeah. something that I thought of three years ago as just being an arcane, obsolete provision has real effects yeah. today. We'll get into liabilities. Yeah. yeah. So we wanted to make sure that... First of all, it wasn't just me yeah. making changes, but that we took really a look line by line. Because as things get amended, sometimes they get tacked on, but then they're inconsistent. Uh huh. Yeah. So that's what we did. So here's the question. All right, we'll have a few questions. It's okay, a, that's all right. Show of questions. That's that's um, what we're that's what we're here for. In reviewing the uh, the charter, you know, you give an example about UC. Uh, it's a good example. In your review, would there be things that may be added to the charter to, to reflect where we are now politically um, and culturally? Uh, th th there were. First of all, let me let me explain how the task force was created. Okay. We, through a motion of city council, unanimously adopted a motion that said we would appoint a task force. Okay. And what we tried to do was reflect the demographics of Cincinnati. So 
we had Republicans, Democrats, Charterites, Independents, African Americans, whites, people from labor, people from business. Everyone with a vested interest, basically. We tried to get everyone's viewpoint okay, okay. on this. And then created, they, they chose some co-chairs. Okay. And, and then the co-chairs started running the meetings. Okay. Um, and, and you had people from the League of Women Voters on there and the Women's City Club, so good government people. And what, what they found was this, this was a bigger task okay. than they had originally assumed. And, and they broke up into committees. And then they even reached out farther and said, even if you're not on the task force, if you want to participate in one of these different committees, you can do that. So we were looking at elections, balance of power, as well as doing a line by line review of the task force. They came up with over 140 questions. The Task the task force, force okay. about the charter, some of which were technical legal questions that could be answered by our solicitor's office, but some really didn't have a definite answer. Sometimes we found things that were inconsistent with what was required under state and federal law. All right. Can you give an example? Um, in the charter, there was a provision that said if you want to have a special meeting of council, you have to give 12 hours notice. It's been the general law of the state for 40, 50 years okay. that you have to give 24 hours notice. Makes sense to me. You know, so, but it was still in our charter right. at 12 hours. If you don't know the state law, you're going to think all you have to do is give a 12 hour notice. So, and again, this task force started meeting early 2014 All right. and, and spent a lot of time going through it. We found a number of those, what we call obsolete provisions, inconsistent with state law provisions. And in 2014, we put a rather lengthy charter amendment on the ballot to clean that stuff up. This was all non-controversial okay. cleanup stuff. We didn't put, we tried not to put anything of substance. Let's, let's go back. Non-controversial, but nothing of substance. Or, what do you mean by that? Well, nothing that would be a substantive change. Okay. I should you, say. You gotta give me an example. I, the, the examples I gave you. Okay, okay. Um, like, so basically, you want to put on there that these things are obsolete. We like these things to be removed. We'd like these, these things to be removed or this to be changed to reflect like what, it, what it has okay. to be. Okay. But nothing that would really change our form of government. Okay, I understand. All right. Um, and that's what I meant by a substantive okay. change. Okay. Even something that the task force thought should have been relatively non controversial which was what's been referred to as the pocket veto power All right. or purported power. Can you, can you explain that? Okay. The charter provides that the mayor shall assign all matters brought forth by the administration or by council members to a committee. Okay. That's all it says. In past councils, that's been interpreted to provide that there was no time frame in which that had to be done. And we did a little research and we found that a number of items, and, and we're talking in the hundreds, okay. had been held in past councils until the last meeting of that council. You <laughs> so the you election occurs. In terms the, of terms. Yeah, the election okay. occurs in November. You're having one more meeting at, towards the end of November, and finally things get assigned to a committee when there's actually no time to consider yeah. them. And these people they may have been introduced a year before. Really? But they were just held okay. and nothing done with them. 
could, could that be, was that done to be advantageous to the people in power at that time? Do you, do you believe that or is that too? I, I believe that. Okay. I believe that. Kicking the can down the road, per it, se. It, or just, and, and, and many of these things may not have even had a chance of passing. Okay. But it's just a discussion. Yeah. There was no discussion of them because they were never on anybody's agenda. All right. And, and that was something that some current council members strenuously objected to. Okay. Because they weren't getting their items on the agenda. There was, so we wanted to put an amendment into the charter that said within two council meetings, within two regularly scheduled council meetings, okay. something will be placed on the agenda. So I'm going to stay with that for just a minute because okay. some of our viewers may not know uh, when a council meeting takes place. So you said two scheduled council meetings. When do council meetings take place? Council meetings take place generally every Wednesday. All right. Now, during the summer, we meet through June. We have one meeting in July, one meeting in August. So basically, in most cases, it would be within two weeks. Okay, within two weeks. So, so if something's introduced at the beginning of the month, by the end of the month, we should have an idea of where it's going. At least it would be assigned to a committee, and then that committee may have two weeks to consider it. Okay. If it's approved, then it has to be put back on the full agenda for a vote by council within okay. two weeks. So within a couple of months, you should be able to have an answer, yes or no, whether your legislation is going to go forward. Okay, okay. And I think that's what most people expect yeah. of local government is we don't want to stop anybody's ideas from moving forward. We may disagree yeah. on, the, on, on the merits of an idea, but, but at let's, least we can let's have a discussion, have a discussion about, about it. Yes, yes. So um, in, in staying with that, just with the, the amendment, a committee was selected, or selected without really a timeline, by the by the mayor. Um, well, I, the, the 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 task force was selected actually well, by our. Yeah, I know the task force was selected by by you, and I, I like to. You said that you you put out a, an announcement for that, but in, in the example you gave with just the the inconsistencies, uh, you you'd have a, a, an issue that would be uh, supposed to, a committee supposed to be formed for it. It was also the mayor's responsibility to form the committee under the charter? Well, the committees are already formed. The okay. city council committees, we have standing committees. Okay. So we have like a budget and finance committee. We have a law and public safety committee. We have a rules and okay. audit committee. We have a neighborhoods committee. We have a transportation committee, um, human, human. Uh, Relations? <laughs> well, I, Human relations and art, and okay. then there's an education and entrepreneurship, and a uh, s sort of a business. Okay. Those are those are sort of our standing standing committees. committees, and various council members are on various committees. Okay. Well, uh, sir, we we have to take a break. Okay. Um, you're watching In Focus, a closer look at human relations. I'm uh, your host, Bill Bell, and we're with Kevin Flynn, and we will be back in a moment. Welcome back to In Focus, a closer look at human relations. Um, prior to the break, we were having our conversation with uh, Mr. Kevin Flynn, a Cincinnati council member, and uh, we were discussing the uh, Charter Member Task Force. So uh, thanks thanks for coming back. Uh, so the task force, they got together, uh, and um, what did they discover? So, so after we had taken care of the obsolete language cleanup stuff in okay. 2014, they started looking into more substantive issues. And they did a lot of research. They did comparisons with other cities. They looked at the history of Cincinnati. They did an exhaustive look at the charter. And they found a lot of areas where there could be changes. Other right. cities, for example, have an executive mayor rather than a city manager, a professional who's not elected that is actually the chief executive of the city. 
that would be the city manager. Okay. In many cities, that position is really held by the mayor, who is an elected position. Okay. So they looked at that, but they said, we don't feel comfortable making a recommendation to council to put something on the ballot for voting by the people right. on that topic because that's a political decision. All right. So they tried to stay out of that. They also looked at the areas of election of council members. Right now we have all nine council members are elected at one time for a four year term. And we're elected at the same time the mayor is elected for a four year term. Okay. So really that means for four years, citizens don't have a way to weigh in on the way their government is going. When you say weigh in, what do you, what do you mean? By, by voting. By voting. Yeah, there's, there's no provisions for recall. There's no provisions for splitting up terms, terms so mm -hmm. that half would be elected in one cycle and half would be elected in another cycle, which is really kind of the way that most boards of directors are, are, are set up. You don't have everybody elected at the same time. It's over a period of time. Didn't we, but we, at one time, didn't we have elections every two years? We did up until, up through the 2011 election. All right. We had council members and, and the mayor, well, the council members were elected for two years. All right. The mayor was elected for four years since 2001. Okay. Um, so every two years the council member was gone. Yeah. All right. And and and, and so you had to run for re-election every two years. So by the first year you're 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 happy. already in the second year you're okay. you're gearing up for re-election and that, and I think that was the the motivation towards going to four-year terms. Okay. Um, you know, reasonable people can disagree on the on whether that was a good move or not. I actually opposed the move to four-year terms because I wanted citizens to have the ability to weigh in All right. every two years. Okay, so I'm... But you. as it stands right now, we're all elected... On the same time. At the same time frame, and we're all elected citywide. Okay. Now, that can get to be a very expensive proposition. How so? Well, if you have to campaign citywide and you don't have a well-known name or you haven't already been elected, you have to get your name out there okay. to enough people to get elected. So that means I'm from Mount Airy. People in Mount Airy know me. All right. They know my name. But just getting the people of Mount Airy to vote for me isn't going to be enough. All right. So I have to familiarize my name out in Sailor Park and in Mount Washington and in Roselawn and Bond Hill and Avondale in Westwood in Price Hill. And to do that, oftentimes you have to buy television commercials. Very, very expensive. Okay. Um, you know, campaign literature that goes across our entire city to all 200,000 registered voters. Okay. Um, so it's a, it's, it's, it can be very expensive. And in fact, I think the top spenders in, in the last election raised in excess of $300,000. Okay. That's a lot of money. Yes. Which cuts out a lot of people from really being able to be competitive. Okay, okay. So there was a look at perhaps moving to some form where we had districts or wards. And this is part of what the charter? That's what the Charter Reform for, Task Force, Force looked, looked at. at. All right. And they said we could have some that are elected citywide and some that are elected by a district. So. And, and, and you can play around with how the district boundaries yeah, are but that's set. An, that's an interesting thing because then there are, there are issues that will probably be ad addressed by a district representative. Well, and that, that's, that's, that's a good thing 
and it can also be a bad thing. All right. It's a good thing in the sense that if I'm a citizen that's living in that area, and you know, pick your, I'll pick Mount Airy. Uh-huh. Kevin Flynn is my representative. And so I can contact Kevin Flynn, and he's going to try and get something done for me. All right. The bad part about it is I'm not looking maybe to the overall good of the city. I'm looking to the good of my district. You mean as a representative? As a representative, okay. because that's the that's, I'm, where you, I'm, that's where you live. Those are your I members. respond to the people that elected me, not okay. to the citizens overall. In that, that's just an example. That's an example, okay. but that's that's one. We don't of, want to put that out. That you know, we no, know that you, that's, okay. <laughs> thank, thank <laughs> we know you that though. you care about everybody. But. Well, but that's one of that's one of the bad things that okay. can be if you have a district election. Okay. Um, and that's kind of what the task force said. All right. Was there's good and bad, but we don't think we should make a recommendation. All right. About that, because that should really again come from the citizens. So when it came out, they finally came out with the report in early July. All right. And they made four or five recommendations. One, in going through after we had cleaned up the language, we found there were some additional things that needed to be cleaned up. Okay. There were some obsolete provisions that we had missed. There were some things such as civil service if you're a veteran or if you're a disabled veteran, you get extra points on the civil service test. All right. That's state law. So it's state. It, it, it has to be there. Okay. It wasn't stated in our provision in our city charter about okay. civil service. Okay. So we wanted to put that in there. There's the, the time frame that we take office. Our election is in on the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November. Okay. The new council was to take effect on December 1st. Well, if you have a close election where somebody's asking for a recount, the Board of Elections doesn't have time to tabulate all the votes wait the period of time for the recount, then do a recount by December 1st. Okay. So that could create who's, who's supposed to be serving. Yes. So we actually de- said we're going to move the start date to January. To, to January. Right. That, gives citizen, that gives the Board of Elections enough time to do a recount if yeah. it's needed. Sort of mirrors what we do. Statewide, yeah, nationally. Statewide national. All right. Yeah. So, um, and there were a couple of other relatively minor things like that. One of the recommendations was also, you know, we have for the mayor, if there are more than two candidates for mayor, mm-hmm. we have a nonpartisan primary. Okay. That primary date was in September. Isn't that sort of close? real close and again the same problem could occur if you had a close vote between the second and third place candidates there wouldn't be time to know who was going to be the candidate in the general election really okay so the task force recommended that that be moved to the normal may primary date um that's one of the recommendations that is going forward. All right. The way that the process by which this happens is the task force made its report and then ordinances were drafted up and then they come to council and then council, if six members of council agree, the six members can say, Let's, Let's put it on the ballot. Let's move, you know, we're, we're not changing the charter. We're just going to put it on the we're ballot. We're just going to put it on the ballot and let the people char- change it. Okay. So the, the cleanup, the further cleanup one, changing the civil service, cleaning up the obsolete language, council agreed, put that on the ballot. So that will be on the ballot this November. All right. 
moving the mayoral primary to May will be on the ballot okay. this November. The pocket veto that we were talking about before, yes. that did not get six votes of council. That will not be on the ballot. Okay. But that doesn't mean it's dead. Yeah. Just it just it means it won't be on the ballot this time. Yeah. If citizens feel strongly enough about it, they can put it on the ballot themselves, or there are other processes that, if, if it were ever seen, and, 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 and while the mayor has talked about the ability to hold legislation, uh -huh. Mayor Cranley hasn't held legislation. I mean, if you want your legislation on, it's been on. If, if there were ever a, an occasion where it wasn't, there's an ability to, to try and force it. To get it out there. Um, other recommendations that the task force made that didn't get on the ballot. There was a recommendation that right now the city manager is recommended by the mayor uh -huh. and approved by council. Okay. Similarly, the removal of the city manager can only be initiated by the mayor okay. and then has to be approved by council. The task force felt it would be a greater balance if either the mayor or city council could initiate the removal of the city manager. But that's, that, that's not on the ballot. That's not on the ballot. It was a recommend, recommendation. The only two things that are on the ballot are moving the mayoral primary to May and the, and the cleanup. The cleanup. So we are, we are out of time. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that you've come down and been able to talk to us. Before, before we go, uh, just if you can just put out your information on how people can contact you for more information, it'd be appreciated. If you want to reach me, just you can contact me by email, kevin.flynn at cincinnati-oh.gov. Or you can call me at 352-4550. Okay. Councilman Floyd, thank you for coming. Bill, thank you. It. it was great. Right. You've been watching In Focus, a closer look at human relations, and we'll see you next time.